Pollution in China is one aspect of the broader topic of environmental issues in China. Various forms of pollution have increased as China has industrialized, which has caused widespread environmental health problems. China will either shut down or curtail operations at dozens of steel plants from November 2017. Over the next five months, under an aggressive action plan to reduce winter pollution in Beijing and its surrounding areas. Topic. Pollution statistics Topic. Soil contamination The immense growth of the People's Republic of China since the 1980s has resulted in increased soil pollution. The State Environmental Protection Administration believes it to be a threat to the environment, food safety and sustainable agriculture. 38,610 square miles square kilometers of China's cultivated land have been polluted, with contaminated water being used to irrigate further 31.5 million miles square kilometers, and another 2 million miles square kilometers have been covered or destroyed by solid waste. The affected area accounts of one-tenth of China's cultivatable land. An estimated 6 million tons of food grain are contaminated by heavy metals every year, causing direct losses of 29 billion yuan $2 billion. Heavy metals including mercury, lead, cadmium, copper, nickel, chromium, and zinc in the contaminated soil have adverse health effects on human metabolism. Ingestion, contact through skin, diet through the soil food chain, respiratory intake, and oral intake can deliver the toxic substances to human beings. Topic. Waste As China's waste production increases, insufficient efforts to develop capable recycling systems have been attributed to a lack of environmental awareness. In 2012, the waste generation in China was 300 million tons, 229.4 kilograms cap per year. A ban came into effect on the 15th of June 2008 that prohibited all supermarkets, department stores and shops throughout China from giving out free plastic bags, therefore encouraging people to use cloth bags. Stores must clearly mark the price of plastic shopping bags and are banned from adding that price onto the price of products. The production, sale and use of ultra-thin plastic bags, those less than 0.025 mm thick, are also banned. The State Council called for a return to cloth bags and shopping baskets. This ban, however, does not affect the widespread use of paper shopping bags at clothing stores or the use of plastic bags at restaurants for takeout food. A survey by the International Food Packaging Association found that in the year after the ban was implemented, 10% fewer plastic bags found their way into the garbage. Electronic waste In 2011, China produced 2.3 million tons of electronic waste. The annual amount is expected to increase as the Chinese economy grows. In addition to domestic waste production, large amounts of electronic waste are imported from overseas. Legislation banning importation of electronic waste and requiring proper disposal of domestic waste has recently been introduced, but has been criticized as insufficient and susceptible to fraud. 
there have been local successes, such as in the city of Tianjin where 38,000 tons of electronic waste were disposed of properly in 2010, but much electronic waste is still improperly handled. Industrial pollution In 1997, the World Bank issued a report targeting China's policy towards industrial pollution. The report stated that, "...hundreds of thousands of premature deaths and incidents of serious respiratory illness have been caused by exposure to industrial air pollution." Seriously contaminated by industrial discharges, many of China's waterways are largely unfit for direct human use." However, the report did acknowledge that environmental regulations and industrial reforms had had some effect. It was determined that continued environmental reforms were likely to have a large effect on reducing industrial pollution. In a 2007 article about China's pollution problem, the New York Times stated that, Environmental degradation is now so severe, with such stark domestic and international repercussions, that pollution poses not only a major long term burden on the Chinese public but also an acute political challenge to the ruling Communist Party. The article's main points included. According to the Chinese Ministry of Health, industrial pollution has made cancer China's leading cause of death. Every year, ambient air pollution alone killed hundreds of thousands of citizens. 500 million people in China are without safe and clean drinking water. Only 1% of the country's 560 million city dwellers breathe air considered safe by the European Union, because all of its major cities are constantly covered in a toxic grey shroud. Before and during the 2008 Summer Olympics, Beijing was frantically searching for a magic formula, a meteorological deus ex machina, to clear its skies for the 2008 Olympics." Lead poisoning or other types of local pollution continue to kill many children. A large section of the ocean is without marine life because of massive algal blooms caused by the high nutrients in the water. The pollution has spread internationally, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides fall as acid rain on Seoul, South Korea, and Tokyo, and according to the Journal of Geophysical Research, the pollution even reaches Los Angeles in the USA. The Chinese Academy of Environmental Planning in 2003 produced an unpublished internal report which estimated that 300,000 people die each year from ambient air pollution, mostly of heart disease and lung cancer. Chinese environmental experts in 2005 issued another report, estimating that annual premature deaths attributable to outdoor air pollution were likely to reach 380,000 in 2010 and 550,000 in 2020. A 2007 World Bank report conducted with China's National Environmental Agency found that Outdoor air pollution was already causing 350,000 to 400,000 premature deaths a year. Indoor pollution contributed to the deaths of an additional 300,000 people, while 60,000 died from diarrhea, bladder and stomach cancer and other diseases that can be caused by waterborne pollution. World Bank officials said. China's environmental agency insisted that the health statistics be removed from the published version of the report, citing the possible impact on social stability. 
A draft of a 2007 Combined World Bank and SAPA report stated that up to 760,000 people died prematurely each year in China because of air and water pollution. High levels of air pollution in China's cities caused to 350,000 to 400,000 premature deaths. Another 300,000 died because of indoor air of poor quality. There were 60,000 premature deaths each year because of water of poor quality. Chinese officials asked that some of the results should not be published in order to avoid social unrest. China has made some improvements in environmental protection during recent years. According to the World Bank, China is one of a few countries in the world that have been rapidly increasing their forest cover. It is managing to reduce air and water pollution. Venemo al. in a 2009 literature review in Review of Environmental Economics and Policy, noted the wide discrepancy between the reassuring view in some Chinese official publications and the exclusively negative view in some Western sources. The review stated that Although China is starting from a point of grave pollution, it is setting priorities and making progress that resemble what occurred in industrialized countries during their earlier stages of development. Environmental trends were described as uneven. A quality of surface water in the south of China was improving and particle emissions were stable. But NO2 emissions were increasing rapidly and SO2 emissions had been increasing before decreasing in 2007, the last year for which data was available. Conventional approaches to air quality monitoring are based on networks of static and sparse measurement stations. However, there are drivers behind current rises in the use of low cost sensors for air pollution management in cities. The immense urban growth of Chinese cities substantially increases the need for consumer goods, vehicles, and energy. This in turn increases the burning of fossil fuels, resulting in smog. Exposure to smog poses a threat to the health of Chinese citizens. A study from 2012 shows fine particles in the air, which cause respiratory and cardiovascular diseases are one of the key pollutants that are accounted for a large fraction of damage on the health of Chinese citizens. <laughs> Water pollution The water resources of China are affected by both severe water shortages and severe water pollution. An increasing population and rapid economic growth, as well as lax environmental oversight, have increased water demand and pollution. According to an investigation in 1980, the entire country has 440 billion cubic meters of the total water consumption. Consumption by agriculture, forestry, husbandry, and country residents was about 88% of the total consumption. However, an investigation shows that 19% of water in main rivers which has been polluted as well as a total length of 95,000 km. In addition, a survey for 878 rivers in the early 1980s shows that 80% of them were polluted to some extent, and fishes became extinct in more than 5% of total river length throughout the country. Furthermore, there are over 20 waterways unsuitable for agricultural irrigation due to water pollution. In response, China has taken measures such as rapidly building out the water infrastructure and increased regulation as well as exploring a number of further technological solutions. <inaudible> <inaudible> Air pollution Air pollution has become a major issue in China and poses a threat to Chinese public health. 
In 2016, only 84 out of 338 prefecture level administrative division of the People's Republic of China (PRC) ranking below a province and above a county or higher cities attained the national standard for air quality. Zheng Nanshan, the president of the China Medical Association, warned in 2012 that air pollution could become China's biggest health threat. Measurements by Beijing Municipal Government in January 2013 showed that highest recorded level of PM2.5 particulate matter smaller than 2.5 micrometers in size, was at nearly 1,000 micrograms per cubic meter. PM2.5, consisting of K+, Ca2+, NO3-, and SO42, had the most fearsome impact on people's health in Beijing throughout the year, especially in cold seasons. Traces of smog from mainland China has been observed to reach as far as California. Sulfur dioxide emission peaked at 2006, after which it began to decline by 10.4% in 2008 compared to 2006. This was accompanied by improvements on related phenomena such as lower frequency of acid rainfall. The adoption by power plants of flue gas desulfurization technology was likely the main reason for reduced SO2 emissions. Large scale use of formaldehyde in make home building products in construction and furniture also contributes to indoor air pollution. <laughs> Particulates Particulates are formed from both primary and secondary pathways. Primary sources such as coal combustion, biomass combustion and traffic directly emit particulate matter PM. The emissions from power plants are considerably higher than in other countries, as most Chinese facilities do not employ any flue gas treatment. High secondary aerosol particulates formed through atmospheric oxidation and reactions of gaseous organic compounds contribution to particulate pollution in China is found. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, such fine particles can cause asthma, bronchitis, and acute and chronic respiratory symptoms such as shortness of breath and painful breathing, and may also lead to premature death. According to the World Bank, the Chinese cities with the highest levels of particulate matter in 2004 of those studied were Tianjin, Chongqing, and Shenyang. In 2012 stricter air pollution monitoring of ozone and PM2.5 were ordered to be gradually implemented from large cities and key areas to all prefecture-level cities, and from 2015 all prefecture-level or higher cities were included. State media acknowledged the role of environmental campaigners in causing this change. On one micro blog service, more than a million mostly positive comments were posted in less than 24 hours, although some wondered if the standards would be effectively enforced. The U.S. Embassy in Beijing regularly posts automated air quality measurements at, at Beijing Air on Twitter. On 18 November 2010, the feed described the PM2.5 AQI air quality index as crazy bad", after registering a reading in excess of 500 for the first time. This description was later changed to, "...beyond index", a level which recurred in February, October, and December 2011. In June 2012, following strongly divergent disclosures of particulate levels between the observatory and the U.S. Embassy, Chinese authorities asked foreign consulates to stop publishing inaccurate and unlawful data. Officials said it was not scientific to evaluate the air quality of an area with results gathered from just only one point inside that area, and asserted that official daily average PM2.5 figures for Beijing and Shanghai were 
almost the same with the results published by foreign embassies and consulates. By January 2013 the pollution had worsened with official Beijing data showing an average AQI over 300 and readings of up to 700 at individual recording stations while the U.S. Embassy recorded over 755 on 1 January and 800 by 12 January 2013. On 21 October 2013, record smog closed the Harbin Airport along with all schools in the area. Daily particulate levels of more than 50 times the World Health Organization recommended daily level were reported in parts of the municipality. In 2016, Beijing's yearly average PM2.5 was 73 micrograms per cubic meter, 9.9% improvement compared to 2015. In total, 39 severely polluted days were recorded, five fewer compared to 2015. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Government's response to the air pollution. In an attempt to reduce air pollution, the Chinese government has made the decision to enforce stricter regulations. After record high air pollution in northern China in 2012 and 2013, the State Council issued an action plan for the prevention and control of air pollution in September 2013. This plan aims to reduce PM2.5 by over 10% from 2012 to 2017. The most prominent government response has been in Beijing, aiming to reduce PM2.5 by 25% from 2012 to 2017. As the capital of China, it is suffering from high levels of air pollution. According to Reuters, in September 2013, the Chinese government published the plan to tackle air pollution problem on its official website. The main goal of the plan is to reduce coal consumption by closing polluting mills, factories, and smelters, and switching to other eco friendly energy sources. These policies have been taking effect, and in 2015, the average PM2.5 in 74 key cities in monitoring system is 55 micrograms per cubic meter, showing a 23.6% decrease as of 2013. Despite the reduction in coal consumption and polluting industries, China still maintained a stable economic growth rate from 7.7% in 2013 to 6.9% in 2015. On August 20, 2015, ahead of the 70th anniversary celebrations of the end of World War II, the Beijing government shut down industrial facilities and reduced car emissions in order to achieve a Parade Blue Sky for the occasion. This action resulted in PM2.5 concentration lower than the 35 micrograms per cubic meter national air quality standard. According to data from Beijing Municipal Environmental Protection Monitoring Center, BMEMC. The restrictions resulted in an average Beijing PM2.5 concentration of 19.5 micrograms per cubic meter, the lowest that had ever been on record in the capital. China's strategy has been largely focusing on the development of other energy sources such as nuclear, hydro, and compressed natural gas. The latest plan entails closing the outdated capacity of the industrial sectors like iron, steel, aluminum and cement and increasing nuclear capacity and other non-fossil fuel energy. It also includes an intention to stop approving new thermal power plants and to cut coal consumption in industrial areas. According to research, substituting all coal consumption for residential and commercial use to natural gas requires additional 88 billion cubic meters of natural gas, which is 60% of China's total consumption in 2012, and the net cost would be $32 52 billion. 
Substituting the share of coal-fired power plant with renewable and nuclear energy also requires 700 gigawatts additional capacity, which cost $184 billion. So the net cost would be $140–160 billion considering value of saved coal. Since all the above policies have been already partially implemented by national and city governments, they should lead to substantial improvements in urban air quality. Four-color alert system Beijing launched four-color alert system in 2013. It is based on the Air Quality Index AQI, which indicates how clean or polluted the air is. The Beijing government revised the four-color alert system at the start of 2016, increasing the levels of pollution required to trigger orange and red alerts. The change was introduced to standardize the alert levels across four cities including Tianjin and four cities in Hebei, and perhaps in direct response to the red alerts issues the previous December. <laughs> Light pollution With active economic growth and a huge number of citizens, China is considered as the largest developing country in the world. Due to urbanization, light pollution generalize is an environmental factor that significantly influences the quality and health of wildlife. According to Pengpeng Han et al., in the 1990s, the increasing trend in light pollution regions mostly occurred in larger urban cities, which are mainly located in eastern and coastal areas, whereas the decreasing trend areas were chiefly industrial and mining cities rich in mineral resources, in addition to the central parts of large cities. In the 2000s, nearly all urban cities were dominated by an uprising trend in light pollution. Topic: Pollutants. Topic: Lead. Lead poisoning was described in a 2001 paper as one of the most common pediatric health problems in China. A 2006 review of existing data suggested that one-third of Chinese children suffer from elevated serum lead levels. Pollution from metal smelters and a fast-growing battery industry has been responsible for most cases of particularly high lead levels. In 2011, there were riots in the Zhejiang Haijiu battery factory from angry parents whose children received permanent neurological damage from lead poisoning. The central government has acknowledged the problem and has taken measures such as suspending battery factory production, but some see the response as inadequate and some local authorities have tried to silence criticisms. A literature review of academic studies on Chinese children's blood lead levels found that the lead levels declined when comparing the studies published during 1995 to 2003 and 2004 to 2006 seven periods. Lead levels also showed a declining trend after China banned lead in gasoline in 2000. Lead levels were still higher than those in developed nations. Industrial areas had higher levels than suburban areas, which had higher levels than urban areas. Controlling and preventing lead poisoning was described as a long-term mission. Topic. Persistent organic pollutants China is a signatory nation of the Stockholm Convention, a treaty to control and phase out major persistent organic pollutants POP. 
A plan of action for 2010 includes objectives such as eliminating the production, import and use of the pesticides covered under the convention, as well as an accounting system for PCB-containing equipment. For 2015, China plans to establish an inventory of POP-contaminated sites and remediation plans. Since May 2009, this treaty also covers polybrominated diphenyl ethers and perfluoroarctane zilvonic acid. Perfluorinated compounds are associated with altered thyroid function and decreased sperm count in humans. China faces a big challenge in controlling and eliminating POPs, since they often are cheaper than their alternatives, or are unintentionally produced and then released into the environment to save on treatment costs. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow dust The yellow dust or Asian dust is a seasonal dust cloud which affects Northeast Asia during late winter and springtime. The dust originates in the deserts of Mongolia, northern China and Kazakhstan where high-speed surface winds and intense dust storms kick up dense clouds of fine, dry soil particles. These clouds are then carried eastward by prevailing winds and pass over northern China into Korea and Japan. Desertification has intensified in China. 1,740,000 square kilometers of land is classified as dry and desertification disrupts the lives of 400 million people and causes direct economic losses of 54 billion yuan $7 billion a year, SFA figures show. Sulfur, an acid rain component, soot, ash, carbon monoxide, and other toxic pollutants including heavy metals such as mercury, cadmium, chromium, arsenic, lead, zinc, copper, and other carcinogens, often accompany the dust storms, as well as viruses, bacteria, fungi, pesticides, antibiotics, asbestos, herbicides, plastic ingredients, combustion products and hormone-mimicking phthalates. Coal The increasing number of air pollutants can cause incidences of low visibility for days and acid rain. According to the article, Air Pollution in Mega Cities in China, coal accounts for 70% of the total energy consumption, and emissions from coal combustion are the major anthropogenic contributors to air pollution in China. The Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences PNAS also highlights the Howey River policy established during China's central planning period between 1950–1980. The policy provided homes and offices with free coal for winter heating, but was limited solely to the northern region due to budget limitations. The policy led to a dramatic increase in coal consumption and production. Coal production alongside rapid economic growth has increased the emission of harmful pollutants such as carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, and small particle matter known as PM2.5 and PM10. Long-term exposure to pollutants can cause health risks such as respiratory diseases, cancer, cardiovascular and cerebrovascular diseases. Coal is a huge issue because of the SO2 emissions from coal factories. According to the article, SO2 exceeded the Chinese Grade 2 standards in 22% of the country's cities and caused acid rain problems in 38% of the cities. Other pollutants 
In 2010 49 employees at Wintech were poisoned by N-hexane in the manufacturing of touchscreens for Apple products. In 2013, it was revealed that portions of the country's rice supply were tainted with the toxic metal cadmium. Topic: <laughs> Impact of pollution. A 2006 Chinese green gross domestic product estimate stated that pollution in 2004 cost 3.05% of the nation's economy. A 2007 World Bank and SAPA report estimated the cost of water and air pollution in 2003 to 2.68% or 5.78% of GDP, depending on if using a Chinese or a Western method of calculation. A 2009 review stated a range of 2 to 10% of GDP. A 2012 study stated that pollution had little effect on economic growth, which in China's case was largely dependent on physical capital expansion and increased energy consumption due to the dependency on manufacturing and heavy industries. China was predicted to continue to grow using energy inefficient and polluting industries. While growth may continue, the rewards of this growth may be opposed by the harm from the pollution unless environmental protection is increased. A 2013 study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences found that severe pollution during the 1990s cut five and a half 5 .5 years from the average life expectancy of people living in northern China, where toxic air has led to increased rates of stroke heart disease and cancer a 2015 study from the non-profit organization Berkeley Earth estimated that 1.6 million people in China die each year from heart lung and stroke problems because of polluted air topic <laughs> <laughs> cross border pollution Topic. Criticisms of government environmental policies Critics point to the government's lack of willingness to protect the environment as a common problem with China's environmental policies. Even in the case of the latest plan, experts are skeptical about its actual influence because of the existence of loopholes. This is because economic growth is still the primary issue for the government, and overrides environmental protection. However, if the measures to cut coal usage were applied strictly, it would also mean the dismantling of the local economy that is highly reliant on heavy industry. The Financial Times interviewed a worker who stated, if this steel mill didn't exist, we wouldn't even have anywhere to go to eat. Everything revolves around this steel factory, our children work here. <laughs> Pollution ratings As of 2004, the top five environmentally friendly cities, Haikou, Zhuhai, Zhanjiang, Gilan, Beihai, the top five cities with most effective pollution controls, Nantong, Lianyungang, Shenyang, Suzhou, Fuzhou The ten cities with worst air quality, Linfen, Yangquan, Datong, Shizhouishan, Sanmengxia, Jinchang, Shijiajuang, Xianyang, Zuzhou, Luoying According to the National Environmental Analysis released by Tsinghua University and the Asian Development Bank in January 2013, seven of the ten most air polluted cities in the world are in China, including Taiyuan, Beijing, Arumqi, Lanzhou, Chongqing, Jinan, and Shijiajuang. Topic: National Sword Policy. 
In April 2017, President Xi Jinping in a speech during the 34th meeting of the Reform Enforcement Task Force emphasized the country's focus on environmental issues related to foreign waste. China then notified the World Trade Organization WTO in July 18, 2017 that it intends to ban additional solid waste imports by year end. This includes plastics waste, unsorted waste paper and waste textile materials. In March 2018, the National Sword Policy came into effect, banning the import of 24 categories of scrap materials, including low-grade plastics and unsorted mixed paper. See also Some in only original Chinese.